As I mentioned in a previous video, there's no reason why you can't locate points in three-dimensional space directly through AkiDraw's three input boxes. However, you need to be very aware of the compass orientation before you do. Let's try this example. Now you notice that at the moment, my compass orientation is standard 3D design cube orientation. And what I've done is to draw a square. What I want to do is to locate a data point vertically beneath this corner. And from that point, I will draw a line horizontally to line up with this corner. And I can draw a line from this line up to that corner. And I'm going to use AkiDraw's input boxes to do so. So I'm going to start my line tool. And I'm going to find that data point. I'm not starting my line there. So I need to plop the compass into place. So F11 and O to locate the compass. Now it's in top view at the moment. And you would normally expect to use the E shortcut key to rotate the compass into either a side or a front orientation to place that line vertically downwards. But I'm going to leave it in top orientation. I'm going to use the input boxes now. So I need to enter dimensional information. So in the X box, I'm going to enter zero. In the Y box, enter zero as well, because I'm not moving in either of those directions. But in the Z box, I'm entering negative one, because the Z axis at the moment is upwards vertically in design cube orientation. I need to go vertically downwards in that same orientation. So negative one is what I need. Now, as soon as I do that and bring my compass onto the screen, you'll see the projection of that data point. Now remember, I have not data pointed to accept this location. I merely located the compass there. This is the data point that I want. So I accept that with a data point. And there's my line starting vertically below the corner. So now I'm running in this direction. And I can place this line. And it's one unit. And my previous distance marker tells me where it is. So I can accept that. Now I need to go upwards to this corner. Now I could simply just snap it there, but let's do it the hard way. I'm going to enter again, zero and zero, and this time positive one, because this time I'm moving in the positive Z direction. There's my new data point. I'll accept that and my line is drawn. As you can see, it's possible to find data points in this way using the compass combined with the O shortcuts, but it's a long way around and not particularly intuitive. Try it for yourself to see how it works exactly. Now the Polar Compass 2 has three inputs. I'll change to the Polar Compass right now. And we have, of course, distance, angle, and z-axis. You can do exactly the same thing in the Polar Compass. And here you would simply enter values for the distance first, and then the angle, and then, of course, the distance in the z-axis to achieve exactly the same thing as using the rectangular compass. Now, you should also be aware that you can use the keyins provided in the keyin facility. And if you press M at the keyboard, my Aki draw is active, you'll find the standard data point keyin. This is the old, old system that was used before Aki draw was invented, but it works in much the same way. So that's the end of the compass orientation sections, which are all very, very important. And you must have a really good idea of how these work before you start on the next sets of videos, which now start to deal with three-dimensional objects themselves.